I think a lot of people feel stressed by the idea of living in a small space, but I've lived in a lot of small spaces. Three of my last apartments were studio apartments, and they're some of my favorite places that I've ever lived, so this is how I did it. Welcome to episode four of Homeschool. Homeschool is a series to help you develop your personal style. And if you live in a small space or if you're moving into a small space, then this episode is for you. So I love small spaces. I especially love studio apartments because for me, I like that you can see the whole space from any vantage point, especially like living alone. If I heard a creepy noise and I was in my bedroom, you can see everything. And I also really like that you have those open, that open line of sight, that it's all one big area because in a small space, I think when you do have those dividing walls kind of closing everything off, it feels smaller than it already is. I also find that it's a lot easier to decorate a small space. I think when I've furnished larger homes, it can kind of feel like you're never really done. So maybe you spend a lot of time, a lot of money on finishing your dining room. But if you have that spare room, a guest room that is kind of just empty and it accumulates junk, you always have in the back of your mind like, oh, it's not really done yet. But with a small space, you get to that finish line a lot sooner, a lot faster, and then you can just enjoy living there. So I don't want people to feel like decorating a small space is like a prison sentence because in a lot of ways, it can be really fun and easier than decorating a larger space, but there are some things to keep in mind. So where do you start? I always like to start with function. I think that that should be the first step of any design process, thinking through how you want your home to function for you and your lifestyle. So think about what are your daily routines and your daily rituals that are part of your everyday life, because that's how you can decide what you're going to do with the layout and the different rooms or different areas of a room and those are also the places where i would recommend investing in so is it going to impact your apartment or your home and your life visually functionally emotionally and once you know that then you can feel better about investing some money or energy into finding that piece and that's what i like to call a bang for your buck piece within a small space those daily routines are going to be crucial for you to figure out the layout and what you're gonna do with the apartment because you probably don't have room for everything. You probably don't have a separate living room, dining room, formal dining room, a workout room, a home office, a guest room. Chances are in a small space, this is all gonna be happening in the same area. And so understanding how you move through a space and how you function is gonna help you prioritize what you do and don't really need. In my last apartment, which I think was around 300 square feet, I lived there with my boyfriend and my dog and I also work from home sometimes. So I'm someone who likes to cook a lot, we eat a lot, and I like to eat my meals sitting at a dining table. I'm just not comfortable sitting at a sofa. I'm definitely gonna spill on myself. But if you're someone who likes to eat most of your meals sitting on a sofa, or if you're someone who likes to sit on the floor, I know a lot of people who like to sit on the floor, work on the floor, then maybe you don't need a dining table and four dining chairs. Maybe that's space that would be better used elsewhere. So there are really no rules to how you furnish your space. I, there's no rule that says you need to have a sofa, two armchairs, a dining table, six dining chairs. The great thing about a small space is that you get to write your own rules and create, especially if you live by yourself, to create exactly what you need it to be. So if you are a sewer, then 
you want space for a sewing table and storage for all of your materials. And that may take precedence over having a dining table that seats four. You may just have a small bistro table that seats one or two. You get to write your own rules. If you have no use for something, get rid of it. If you haven't worn it in six months, get rid of it. If you don't think you're gonna use something regularly, don't buy it in the first place. I think that in some ways living in a small space can really simplify your life and some people thrive on that. This is gonna be unique to every single person, but the point is your routines, your daily life is what's going to dictate how you decorate your space, not what someone else has in their home, not necessarily what you had in your home growing up, it's just what you need for right now. So once you know what you want in your home, how you want it to function for you, then you can layer on style on top of that. And if you haven't figured out your personal style yet, I have a quiz for that. We talked about it in the last episode and I'll put the link in my bio. But I would say stick to one style and have a tight color palette, especially in a small space. You don't wanna try and do too much. Um, I think it's just easier and simpler for you. So if you are a neutrals person, then you may wanna go with bedding and a sofa that are in creams and camels and have just one accent color. If you love color, then I would stick to three colors and pick three colors that are gonna go well together. If you're not sure if they're gonna go well together, I think it can be hard to just like pick colors out of thin air. I prefer to find like a painting that you love and pick three colors out of that because you know that they're gonna go well together. Or if you have a piece of clothing that has three colors in it, I would pick those and use that as your basis so that you can make your decisions. Another option is I have this book called A Dictionary of Color Combinations by the Japanese artist Sanso Wada. And it has a whole bunch of pairs of colors, groups of three. Um, I find this really useful. I use it myself. So you're kind of creating parameters for yourself. That's the way that I like to think of it. And then you can get creative within those parameters, but I feel like if you had no parameters and you just went with every color, then it can kind of get complicated and harder for you to make decisions. But when you have a focus, then it's a lot easier for you to edit. And a lot of decorating and living in a small space is about editing. So first and foremost, you have the function, whether or not you're going to use something, whether it's gonna impact your daily life. And then once you have that color palette, it's gonna help you say yes or no to various things. Um, it, it'll help you decide whether or not to buy something new. It'll help you figure out whether you should accept something if someone's giving something away. Um, it can help you figure out whether or not to move something from your old home to your new home. It's just giving you some guidance so that you know what to say yes and no to. And something else that I included in the quiz results, if you took the quiz, is materials. So materiality can be really important to giving you the feel and the personality that you want for a space. So if you got Pop Arcade, then you know to be looking for those kind of high shine materials like chrome and glass, acrylic, and that's gonna give you that feel of modernity, but if you got Vintage Salon, then you'll probably be looking for more velvet, gold, brocade, um, antique woods, more worn in pieces that are gonna give you that feeling of antiquity. If you got Pottery Studio, then you're gonna wanna look for materials that are more natural, like natural fibers, wool, jute, clay, stone, a lot of natural texture, which is the opposite of someone who's pop arcade. So the materials can make a big impact too and help you decide what's gonna be a yes and what's a no. If you like a whole bunch of different styles, I would pick one for a small space. I think it's a little bit too hard to try and do one style in your bedroom or bed area and then a different style in your living area, especially if you're in a studio. So 
I think just make life easier for yourself and pick one style. I think it can actually be really fun to do this in a small space because you can fully dig into that one style and it's a lot easier to keep it looking cohesive in a small space than it is in a larger one. You may not be living in a small space or a studio apartment forever, so enjoy this phase because I think when you get into a larger space, it feels like you're just trying to fill big blank walls forever and ever. But in a small space, you may just have to fill one or two big blank walls and then you're done. If you do have specific questions about your small space, I do offer video consultations and I actually just finished one with someone who lives in the East Village and has a studio apartment and we worked through her work from home space together. So we can get a lot done in an hour. I'll put the link in my bio and I will see you next week in the next episode. Bye.